All right, family, welcome back. This is Kevin Orris. You're on the Revolution Podcast. Here with another episode inviting leaders, speakers, entrepreneurs, and founders to share their story and talk about what is happening in their world, what's happening in our world, who's becoming increasingly chaotic, but also increasingly creative. I'm stoked today to bring my brother Sanyika, the Firestarter Street on the show. I've been really inspired by this man's content and been kind of following him for a while and following a call we had. I thought we're definitely going to rock a podcast. If you don't know Sanyika, he's an amazing coach supporting a lot of men. His mission is to help 1 million men create generational wealth for their families by transforming their coaching business and creating unparalleled success. Um, this man's a legend. I really appreciate his vibration, his embodiment. And he specializes in the All In CEO, which is his program. He's got a TV show. He's running masterminds for men and doing a lot of coaching, helping people really up-level their business. So grateful to be here with you, brother, and grateful for you coming on the show. Mm. Thank you for having me, man. Uh, I said this before we got on camera, but I just want to say it for the record, dude. Your hair looks spectacular. Keep that. <laughs> That's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, look, I'm excited to just like to just kick it. You know, I would just say this. If you are watching, this would be a good time to grab notes. I tell people to take notes all the time. I tell my clients, I tell everybody, take notes. You know, don't take notes because I'm dope. Take notes because you're dope. Um, you know, right. um, you know, 20 percent of the notes that I take end up end up becoming programs that I create. So it would be quite profound of you to be able to be in the practice of taking notes because your ideas are very valuable. So um, this is going to be jam packed. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I'll just add this layer on to what you shared about me. You know, I, I consider myself to be a, a leadership coach. And when you create generational wealth in your business, your body and your being as a man, to me, it has this powerful ripple effect. It has a really profound ripple effect. It's a ripple effect that that echoes pretty much through everything that you are that that is, that is happening in your life it it, it mm. transforms the way that that it transforms families right it trans transforms generational narratives it transforms uh, the way that we get to show up in our own, in 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 our lives for ourselves right? it does there's magic in the way in in stepping into your greatest form of self leadership and that's really what it means to go all in it means to be a man of alignment and to be a man of integrity and when we operate in those two uh, values which are the two uh, quintessential values for any high performing organization or individual um, is alignment and integrity. Um, so uh, when you operate in the, in that space, um, magic can happen. So I'm looking forward to bringing forth some magic. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it, brother. And I love the note taking part because you're absolutely right. The most powerful offerings I've ever created or downloads are just in like an Evernote folder and a journal I found. And I was just like, Oh shit. Like, like high fiving my past self or, just yes. downloading the best information. So that was yeah. the gem right there. I want to pluck immediately. Yeah. And I want to compliment your studio. Because Thank you, man. It's amazing. And I'm just getting set up here and building mine out in Austin, but you got a dope studio. And I, 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 I hope to be surrounded by many leather bound books and <laughs> things in a, in a cool creative space. So. Thank yeah. you, man. Thank you. I, I take, I take great pride in it and, uh, and it is, it is, it's great to have it. I'm grateful for it and thank you. Yeah, let's rock it. Yeah. So I wanted to start off just with your little bit of your hero's journey. This is kind of the frame I do on the podcast. Uh, I'm a full blown Campbellian Jungian. I love the hero's journey as a model and as an archetype. And you shared some of this on a call we had last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, um, around some of your origin story, your hero story. And I would love for you to share, you know, however much feels valuable on the, on our time limit here, maybe the, some of the abridged version, but really like your core story, like people always ask me, and I'm sure you hear this, like, why coaching? Like, why did you start coaching? Why did you start, you know, public speaking, creating, you know, offerings and value in this way? And everyone finds their own way to it. And I thought your story was amazing. So I'd love for you to share some of that with everyone. Mm. I will definitely, I'm, I'm very excited to share. Yo, I didn't want to do none of this shit. <laughs> I didn't want to do none of this shit. Yeah. Like, this is fucking, nah, I didn't want to do none of this stuff. I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, none of this shit is, it may, may, like, makes, 
real real sense in in the context dude I, I i've lived most of my life broke straight up i lived the majority of my life i was just telling somebody else the other day i was like yeah i live most of my life broke i was at a no that's a, look we're gonna we're gonna keep it real we're gonna keep it real let's do I, it i told somebody out that my story always starts in this place that i like to call the rock bottom sandwich period i was already at rock bottom already at rock bottom you know, and rock bottom smashed on top of me. So it's like an Oreo cookie and I was the filling, right? So I'm already here. And then rock bottom is like, nah, 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 we got, we got more for you. <laughs> you know, like I'm financially broke, you know, um, emotionally broken. Two DUIs, girlfriend paying the bills, making $11 an hour, working at a reverse phone lookup company, talking to old women who... We're trying to find a guy that took them for all their money on dating websites. It's wild. Right. So, and I'm driving a 92, I'm 30, 42 now, but when I was, I was back then, I was 35. And I was like, you know, driving a 92 BMW 325i. And look, I, I am grateful for the car. I'm grateful for my sister for giving me the $2,500 so I could purchase it. And um, I was so ashamed that I car did. I would drive it to a location and park it so far away, I might as well have just walked. Like, that's the life I was living. Those are the external circumstances. That wasn't the reason that I was operating in that space. All right. Those are the, that was the byproduct of it. The same way that my life in the present moment is the byproduct of, the, of, of what I am standing in. The thing I didn't realize is that I was hiding. I was hiding in my life. I was... 15 years, I moved, I moved to LA 15, 16 years ago from DC to pursue a career in entertainment. I was acting, I did TV, I did movies. I was like doing some big stuff. You know what I'm saying? I did, a, I did three national commercials. I did two TV shows. I did two movies. I was like, oh yes. And everybody was like, you're not going to get any work. You're too big to get work. You know, I'm six, eight. So they were like, oh, you're too big to get work. And I was just like, all right, we'll see. And then I started booking jobs and, and then I took acting for granted. And then I got into what I really wanted to do, which is songwriting, right? So um, y'all didn't see that coming. Y'all didn't see it. Was like, <laughs> so I got signed to a label on Universal. I wrote for Too Short. I wrote for Nick Lachey and 98 Degrees. I did like, I did some stuff. But then the thing about songwriting is that songwriting makes, like to be an effective songwriter, you have to be vulnerable and transparent and know how to collaborate and do all those human things. And what I didn't realize is that every value is a skill. I didn't realize that honesty is a skill. I used to think it was an innate or intrinsic quality. I didn't, I thought you just, you're just honest or you're just this. I didn't know you could learn it. Right. right? Or practice it. Or practice it. I didn't know it was a, yeah, like practice it, being in the practice, in the, in the being and the doing of it. So what, so the thing is that I was hiding from what was going on in my life. I was ashamed of everything I had done. I got that job because I was ashamed that my DUI situation. You know, I got, you know, my I was in my relationship, so I was codependent on her. So I didn't want to leave the relationship because I, I, you know, she was taking care of the money. So I, I didn't want to leave the comfort of the environment. It was all this paradigm shit that I was afraid to step out of. And I didn't break free of it until I got in an environment of men who were living their lives on purpose mm. who were living their lives on purpose who were who were in the space of saying in the inquiry of whether or not their lives are effective or ineffective because the first thing that you have to do to make, create a life that works is you have to realize that your life is not working That's right? Right. and so i was like i didn't realize that my life wasn't working i was just so so used to hiding from shit that i was just like yo this is not this is the, this is what it is it is going to be this way and so then I, so, you know, to summarize on that note, like the story is, you know, stepping into an environment of, of men specifically um, that challenged me to see myself in another way and to see a greater possibility within myself. But and the, the funny thing about it is that that challenge came at a point in my life where I didn't really believe in myself. But there's a quote by Les Brown. I always quote it says, Sometimes you need to believe in the in, in somebody else's belief in you until your belief is strong enough to kick in. And that is exactly what was happening for me in that moment. I had men that believed in me. I had people that were showing me a reflection that was powerful. And then that 
started to turn the wheels of maybe I could create a new possibility in my life. And then that spurred a series of decisions that got me from broken, broken to now I'm just breaking records in every aspect of my life. Let's go. Boom. See, this is this is uh, something I noticed about you, Sanika, is that you are an eloquent and loquacious public speaker. Hmm. Because some of these phrases you just used are mnemonics. Like, I will never forget some of these things. I'm sitting here learning, listening to you. And I, that was something I noticed on our first call. Just a fun side note, because I geek on this stuff. I love language. I love sp the spoken word and how it impacts us. The second thing is what you just said is so simple and true, but maybe one of the hardest things for, I think, the modern man, if we just take like a random dude living in an American neighborhood, what you said, it's like when you're at rock bottom, when your life is not going where you want it, well, A, do you even know that it's not what you want? That's a big part of what you were sharing. But being in a group of men that's, that are on purpose and are challenging you and mentoring iron sharpening iron with you is the X factor. And I can hundred percent say that that was in my quest too, in my life. Um, now what's crazy, and maybe you can speak to this, the opposite is what you find the lone wolf syndrome. So a lot of men, when they get into that struggle town, which I know this was my pattern was, you know, bring it in, like put the walls up, you know, maybe you have the relationship with a woman, Maybe you have a few good friends, but it's kind of like you don't really talk about the deep stuff. Certainly purpose isn't on the table. And it's like that's exactly the opposite of how a man needs to grow. Bingo. Motherfucking bingo. Like like B-I-N-G-O and bingo was is like give me the bingo board with like the, the old people in the damn cafeteria. And the little buttons on the, I'm, I'm be playing bingo. Yo, people go hard on bingo, apparently. Yeah, they do go hard on bingo. That's right. When you lose, them fucking, they throwing the cards like ninja stars. It's a, it's a wrap. So I want to say something about the lone wolf thing because I think it's really powerful that you brought that up. It's very similar to what I used to think when people asked me if I was an alcoholic. And I would tell them, I said, well, no, nah, I'm not an alcoholic, right? Because the defensiveness comes in. By the way, if you're defensive, this is something that you should be listening to. So lean in a little bit. Um, people say, oh, you're an alcoholic. I'd be like, no, I'm not an alcoholic. Right? And so my response would be to whether or not I was an alcoholic, but it would not be in the inquiry of whether or not I had a drinking problem. And so the definition of a drinking problem for me is when you drink, you have problems. That's a drinking problem. I had legal problems. I had relationship problems. I had money problems. I had, I had a drinking problem. Right? Who gives a shit whether or not it's fucking alcoholism or not? If you, have a, if you have problems when you drink, you have a drinking problem. I'm bringing that up in the context of this idea of the lone wolf is that people go, well, I'm not a lone wolf. I got people around me. I got folks. I got dudes around me. I got guys around me, right? And here's the thing about that. I was telling somebody, I said, I was talking to a client one time and I said, I told him, I said, um, you know, I said, you know, he, we both, I'm from D.C., we're, you know, generally where I'm from, do ain't no personal development. Fuck is that? <laughs> what is that? Right. And so you got guys that'll that, you know, we call it Jonin back from I'm from Jonin or rip, ripping or, you know, what I'm saying, you know, like, you know, making fun of each other, whatever you want to call. It. And the thing is, is that is that you will have guys who will make fun of each other. But you won't have a man that will look you in the face, a friend who will look you in the face and tell you, I love you. Hmm. What kind of paradigm is that? It's insane when you put it like that. It's like so, so I got tons of guys around. I'm not a lone wolf because I got tons of guys and we have a good time. And, but you won't, but a guy won't look you in the face and say, I love you. But, but you'll have a guy who will, who, but you'll have a, a dude who, you know, but, but your friends will make fun of each other and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And you might talk about something here that's to, to the point of, you know, you might have some cursory conversations. But the idea is that the majority of the conversations that you are having are not about any level of the or any level of the things that you need to be stepping into. And so what happens is that on the back end of that, um, the other part about it is that they're not willing to challenge you to become better because they don't want to be better. Mother for real. 
people think that the, the enemy is haters. I'm just, I'm fucking, I'm, they, they'd be like, I got hate. I'm like, no one, like the enemy is not haters. The biggest challenge that you have is confronting the people that are in your current universe. Because that is your reality. It ain't the fucking people on Facebook. It's the fact that you don't want to confront the people that you know. That's your biggest issue. Mm. Oh. Half of the people um, with, you know, um, in a client or service-based business talking about, oh, I want to raise prices. I need to get new clients. No, you don't. You need to raise the, your, your prices with the people that you already know. But you have an issue confronting people that you already know. Sucker, that's your biggest issue. And then you want to talk about, the, you know, haters and all this other shit. Like, look, the, 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 the greatest challenge that we have is, is the addressing of the people or that are in our current environment. They are the greatest stakeholders and it's the greatest opportunity. But the idea is that we don't tap into that. So we just make it about it, the external things, about the external environment, about the external stuff. If you want to find out what somebody's really up to in their diet, look in their trash can. You want to find out where somebody's uh, interests lie? Look in their internet search history. I don't need to go looking out there. I can find all the stuff I need to find in your in your universe. So if you really want to start with the transformation, look at the people that are currently around you. You might have too many squares in your circle. Hmm. Bars upon bars. What I'm hearing and what you're sharing right now is the art of confrontation. Which to me is, is a high art for the masculine is being able to confront lovingly the partner, the brother, the friend, the colleague, with some of these issues. And on the topic of haters, I think haters can be amazing teachers. I think haters are super fans in disguise. <laughs> right, right. And haters can also be a KPI, their key performance indicator. Because if you have people trying to troll you in comments on whatever you're doing, um, you're doing something, you're making an impact. So I actually think it's a good sign um, for content. You are creation. damn straight. You are damn straight. Look. Like Cat Williams said, he said, look, if you got five haters, he said, you need to be working on getting to 15 by the end of the summer. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, yeah. the reality, if you, if the, the, the people are afraid for people to have an opinion about them. Right. You know, look, I, I am, I've said this to you last week. Look, I, whenever I walk into a location, I am a walking, I am a potential walk. I am perceived in some instances as an act of violence. You see a big ass black dude walk into a room, people got opinions of him, right? Now the question is, is, is who do I become as a result of what I am imagining, as you so beautifully stated, or um, or what I am creating in them, right? Like who do I become as a result of that perception? Hmm. Right? I don't become the manifestation of what it is that they see me to be. I just become this really big curious guy that's really um, open to to asking powerful questions. So um, it's it's important that um, we don't allow the 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 perceptions of others to inform who we choose to be, right? If people that this is why one of the most important things is that there needs to be a really clear distinction between identity and behavior, which is one of the reasons why you know if if you're looking to get a guy to transition out of a um, an ineffective behavior or a toxic behavior. By the way, I do not believe that toxic masculinity exists. No, it's not real. Right? It it isn't real. Because of something really important, because masculinity does not just denote men. That's right. It's a set of behaviors. So if toxic masculinity exists, and that means that men and women fall into the same category. So then it creates this confusion amongst it. It's not about, so what you're really trying to say is toxic men. And if you call the guy toxic that you're trying to transform, your label has denoted, is, 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 is helping, is, is reinforcing the belief. So if you want, if I can separate the behavior, right? If I have the opportunity to separate the behavior from the individual and I go, look, these are ineffective behaviors that you have a drinking problem, right? You have a, you have a drinking problem, right? You have an, you have an al alcohol abuse problem. You have an alcohol abuse problem. There's a separation in that. And we get to explore that without making the person the problem. Right. 
right? So the idea, the op- there's a there's a great opportunity for us to really start looking at. And I know we're getting into a wide ranging set of topics, but I want to bring this back on point is that we had this conversation about how men can win in the new world. And the reason that men need to win in the new world is because of the fact that um, m- many of us don't know who we really are. Like we've been gravitating around a set of identities that have been cast upon us as opposed to the idea that we get to choose who we really want to be. And, you know, I'm a perfect example of that. Me, perfect example of it. Finding myself lost in my mid-30s, scared to live into my full potential, scared to live into my greatness, scared to live as the, as the, man, as the manifestation, as a manifestation of God on this planet. Somebody asked me, you know, what would you do if, if, uh, if what would you do if God was you? And I said, well, that's a crazy question because I am. <laughs> yeah, already happened. Already happened. <laughs> so now I need to ask myself, what would God do? Divine, universe, whatever is what would in that situation, what would the divine in you do to, to help you to break free of whatever the current entrapment is that it is that, that you are currently experiencing? And when I say entrapment, I'm not just talking about, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, these tangential behaviors like alcoholism or sex stuff or, you know, porn and all that kind, kinds of addictions. I'm talking about not, just not living into the greatness that you know that you have that can emerge from. It. That's right. Just not doing that. It's a crime. And some of y'all have been in the practice of robbing people. It's a fucking crime. If you have medicine to give to the world and you are not giving it to the world, then you are robbing somebody straight up. And everyone does. That's the wild part. Damn straight. And I'm calling you forward in this moment to say, look, if you realize that you have been robbing people, this is a great time to put down the gun and start fucking getting to work. Mm. So beautiful. I love that. So where I want to steer this, because like so many tabs just opened and like this could be. You mean like Maybe. my computer? Because I got like 57 tabs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's how I like, I I view, like the thought streams. You know, like opening tabs and we're just like, all right. It's like some Tony Stark shit. Just like somebody, by the way, somebody's, some, somebody just went through convulsions when I said the 57 tabs. You know damn well y'all got 57 tabs open. Oh, definitely. Don't you make yourself better than me? You know damn well you got tabs open right now. All right. I just closed some of mine, by the way. It's not 57. It's more yeah. 20. <laughs> Three or something, but it was a lot. When I'm doing an interview. I narrow it down to one, but no. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> what I want to bring it back to, Seneca, is you know how men can win in the new world, and just to ask you a direct question because I know there are men watching right now or later, and women that are in relation to men that hearing this and they're like, okay, fuck yeah, I feel the energy. Like, like everyone knows what you're talking about innately, instinctively. Hmm. Like my body responds when I hear it. I everyone I've never met someone who doesn't like what you just said. Everyone has gold to offer the village. They have a gift to give. God, goddess is in everyone. Um, it's a crime. It's a disservice to withhold it. Now to give it fully at the highest level, that's a life's work. Um, specifically for men, for the masculine experience, where do you start? This is this is a question. And there's so many different angles, and I want to hear your version. Because pandemic happens. The boys that are bullshitting, joking with each other, like you were saying, can't look their bro in the face and say, I love them. Or let alone have received physical touch from another man, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, They hear about this stuff. Hey, you need to get a men's circle. Hey, I'm working with a coach. You need to get a mentor. Maybe their woman is like, hey, I I went to a women's circle. You need to do this. And the man's like, I don't know anyone who does that. I can't afford to hire a coach, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you're nailing it with like, you start with your immediate environment. What would you tell a man who asked that question to you today? Hmm. So this is a great framing. You asked me, you said, what would I tell a man if um, he asked me that today? Um, I wouldn't tell him anything. The first thing I would do is I would ask him a question. And the reason why I, I phrase that and, the, and the shift that is because um, many of us have been told what to do. Mm. 
and no one ever and not often has uh, someone sought a man's consent for them to be who they choose to be. So simply asking for his permission um, to ask him a powerful question. It's the first thing I would do mm. is to give him that respect. Right. Well said. Um, the second thing I would do is um, you know I would ask him, does it hurt? Does it hurt? And whether fortunate or unfortunate, and you can classify this however you deem it necessary to classify it, I'm open to that. Um, but the idea is, is um, people say, you know, especially service providers, space providers who don't, who haven't been in the mix for a while, they go, well, I don't want to make people feel pain. And I don't like the idea of talking to people's pain points. I'm like, so you like gaslighting people. Huh? You must like gaslighting people and, and playing God. By the way, you must like playing God. I know we just said that, that we are the manifestation of God, but I'm talking about in the greater context. So the, the, the idea is that if somebody goes, if somebody comes to you and they say, I am feeling pain, right? I am tired of this state of my life. I no longer want to tolerate this, um, this level of my personal existence on this planet. Um, then I would listen to them for what they have to share. But I wouldn't try to say, oh, well, I don't want them to feel pain. I'm not making you feel pain. They're already coming to you feeling pain. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you if it hurts enough. Does it hurt enough for you to transform? Does it hurt enough for you to say, you know, because, because the, I personally believe that men are more sensitive than women. Mm. This, this is a great, I mean, I can already hear people just like, what? Like, this is the opposite of what the, you know, dominant sentiment would be. Sure. Think about it. The, the sensitivity associated with ego. If you call me a bitch, I'd punch you in the face. I would result to physical violence. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, that's how sensitive I am. <laughs> that's not a, that's not a, that's a sensitivity issue. Mm -hmm. That's a lack of emotional regulation and emotional sensitivity issue. The fact that I would result to physical violence as a result of doing something like that. So if I come to somebody and I tell, and I ask them, you know, in, in about the current situation, and there's a natural defensiveness because they go, well, I don't have the money or I don't have this. Or I don't have that. And I, you know, those are all rackets. Those are all um, fixed ways of being with persistent complaints. It's the same complaint and a fixed way of being. Right. So I don't want to change anything. I'm just going to live in the complaint. And so the idea is it, the, 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 the inquiry that I really am curious about is, is does it have it has it gotten you to the point where you feel like you can really transform yourself, like you can transform your situation? So that's I'm, does it hurt enough? Are you inspired enough? Has it has it has it has it gotten you to the point where you are tired of not living into your financial earning potential? Where you are tired of not living into your the potential in your relationship? Has it gotten you to the tired where you where you where you're where you're you know tired of where you're at physically? Right? So my clients have just gotten diagnosed with diabetes. Maybe that's the point. Maybe it's not. Is this the point? Does it hurt enough for you to take the action yet? Mm. And I say the word hurt specifically. All right. Because some of y'all are so damn sensitive that you think that getting into this work is about being broken. It's not about you're not broken. You're not broken when you get into this work. You just realize that something's not working the way you want it to work. But in your in your previous iterations and people who have classified, they have classified you as broken. So they go, I don't want to get a coach. That means that I'm broken. I'm not broken. I can do it on my own. Who needs a coach? Why do I? You, you, the story, it just it just keeps piling on. I don't know. That. Look, man, I have my entire <laughs> life accelerated like that. When I got into the environment, when I tr when I started doing the, the 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 personal development work and getting around the right people that I could draft on, that's right. Right, NASCAR the drafting, right? You want to be around the best, and you and and 
you have to pay to play. And paying to paying doesn't necessarily just mean money. It means time investment. It means energetic investment. Right. It means commitment. It means all those different things which some people are not willing to pay. So because they are willing to live in that racket, right? Willing to live in the fixed way of being with a persistent complaint. I would much rather just live in the complaint other than fixing the current state of the situation. <laughs> so my question to you is, is that it doesn't hurt enough? Hmm. Has it gotten you to the point where you are willing to be like, you know what? I'm tired of this shit from a place of inspiration. But like, you know, like, oh, fuck this shit. I'm tired of this. Tired, tired. I'm tired with bleach. Tired of this shit. <laughs> tired. Right. Tired, tired. And when you get to the point where you are tired enough to allow yourself to step into that new possibility, then there are ample people who are willing and ready to, to help you, to guide you through the next level of your journey. And I'm, I'm one of those people. So, and there's a significant amount of men who are doing phenomenal work in the context, yourself included, of helping to guide um, men to their greatness. And, and I applaud and salute you for the work that you are doing because it is very necessary work. And just FYI, ain't enough people doing it. Not nearly enough. It ain't even close. I mean, this is a, uh, you know, if, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's like from a marketing perspective. I'm not, I don't consider this, but, but it's like a sub niche. The idea of working with a man. You go up to somebody and you tell them you work with men. They be like, why do you only work with men? <laughs> I was like, why do you only work with men? What, what about women? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I love you. I love you. You're great. You're great. We can talk about. We can talk about this later. I got work to do though. We can hop out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the arena on the front lines, you know, where it doesn't have to be politically correct or a, look a certain way. I mean, and th this to me, like what you just said, it, it's so intuitively obvious that men get to work with men. And that, that should be a pretty common institution. And I think if you look in our ancient past, it was. There were, you know, they didn't look at it the same way, but because they literally had to hunt or trade or organize or do warfare men were training men and supporting men and they had rituals for all that shit mm -hmm. um, in the modern world we've gotten very amorphous so like especially with the men and women's movements respectively a lot of like the men's stuff well it can be done by women now is the modern thing and vice versa um, and i think that has done a big disservice to a lot of um, men out there and spe speaking specifically to the Corona times that we're in. I mean, who fucking knows now? Now it's shifted to other things. But um, <clears throat> I think people had an option and we were talking about this on our call. Um, I saw a lot of people double down, like what you were saying, the excuses, the fixed perspective that hurt. They're just like, well, fuck, things are getting harder. Maybe there's more scarcity mindset, whatever. You know, times are going to be lean now. Maybe I'm going to have my work affected, my career. I'm just going to double down on my bullshit. Hmm. And I, I, a lot of these people I loved. And so I was like shocked. And it was my own fucking death process to realize, oh, wow, I, I invested time, energy in people that I didn't actually know at their core because crisis reveals that. And then I saw other people who, let's say your point, it's, it hurt enough. Finally, Corona brought that pain level to a point where they had to have the fuck it moment. Got to have a dose of fuck it, man. Listen, if right now, everybody, it would be a good time to check your phone, check for your current prescriptions, and see if you got fuck it on your prescription okay. list. And if you do not have fuck it on your prescription list, you need to double up on the dose. If you need me to personally write you a prescription, send me an email at CEO, all in CEO, and I will send you a prescription of fuck it. But fuck it needs to be, um, you need a heavy dose of it. Need a heavy, a heavy dose, and I'm not talking about fuck it from the standpoint of, um, fuck, uh, you know, being present, feeling what's going on, experiencing what's going on, like being in the in the exploration of things. I mean, fuck it with the current, with the with allowing yourself to to live in a state where you are not magnificent on this fucking planet. Mm. People ask me how I'm doing, Kevin. I'm doing fucking great, dude. Let's go. My life is fucking fantastic. Are you joking? I will take off my fucking flip-flop and throw it at this damn fucking screen and my life is so damn good. Straight up. 
in all of the shit. I'm just letting you know, like my life is fantastic and I go through shit and the beautiful thing about going through shit and life being fantastic is the fact that the reason that my life is fantastic because I can go through shit. Mm. <laughs> I have the, I am capable of, you know, people talk about that, that, that life is all is about, um, uh, you know, about the pursuit of happiness. I'm like, look, man, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a myriad of emotions. Um, it would be remiss of us to, to pursue only one. How myopic an existence is that where we only pursue one emotion. Oh, so beautiful. Shut up. No, it's not. Here's the deal is that if the idea is that you will go through every emotion in the human experience, what happens when you experience sadness? Life is wrong because the goal is the pursuit of happiness. What if the goal is the ability to feel all emotions at any time in your life and to right. be able to navigate them effectively? That's full feel meant fulfillment. Yes. I believe that the pursuit in life is fulfillment, the ability to navigate through any of those emotions. And I've done it. And I, at the point in this point in my life, man, I've done a fantastic job of being able to cultivate the ability to be able to navigate through some really exponential ex emotional experiences. And I'm very, very, very fucking proud of myself for being able to do it and imparting that wisdom onto my clients. Let me just say something real quick. When, when people go to, um, to boot camp, you're not learning how to shoot a gun. You're learning how to not shoot the wrong person. Mm. When you go to police academy, and we know situations with police, but the idea is that when, when you're not learning how to not shoot a gun, you're learning how to not shoot the wrong person. And we see how that goes. When you go to Wall Street and you're hitting the button and you got a billion dollar hedge fund, you're not going to learn necessarily how to trade. You're going to, to not make mistakes because of your inability to regulate yourself emotionally on this planet. You're going to learn how to emotionally regulate yourself through the most turbulent situations that occur in life. Mm -hmm. That is what you are doing, just so you have it understood. I'm just breaking this down so it is forever broken, so that the pursuit in life is not, is not happiness, the pursuit in life is fulfillment. Mm -hmm. How can we be able to feel what the hell is going on in our experiences on a day-to-day -day basis? And then to be able to move into the into the manifestation of our greatness in each individual moment. I just had a master my call and I was talking to them. I said one of the most tough, the toughest things I'm currently dealing with right now is personally is um, finding the deepest, most authentic place of compassion for my father who is dying. Mm. And me and my father have had a very tumultuous relationship. Um. And by tumultuous, I mean non-existent. I mean, we haven't had a relationship since I was 13. That's, you know, doing the math, it's almost 30 years, really. I mean, on you know, I see him here and there, but ever since 13, it was there's no real relationship. And and now he's on, you know, and he's on the decline. You know, heart attack, dementia. You know, pre Alzheimer's, post. You know, saying all that kind of stuff. It's just all that. And and, and the idea is that um, it's been some of the hardest work because there's still some of that pent up hostility and anger living within me that I am currently still resolving in this moment and right. somebody was like you know he's like look man you know if you don't want to call you that you don't got to call you that i said yes you are absolutely correct and why don't i want to call is it to protect me or to protect him i will repeat is it to protect me or is it to protect him i am not under assault of any physical violence so what am i really trying to protect myself from so, like, I can definitely not call him, and I can be in the inquiry of why I don't want to call him. Because some of y'all go, well, you know what? I'm not going to do it because I don't have to do it. You are correct. I totally agree. And why? Yeah. And why don't you want to do it? What are you trying to protect you from? And I ask myself that question. And then I go back to the question, well, what would God do in this moment? God would understand that if you have been imparted with these tools to be um, uh, a messenger on this planet to be able to deliver some form of value to other people, then why can't you impart them and deliver them in conversations with your own father? Oh, if you so, God. if you so magical, be magical with that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so like I need to, I take my, I take my own medicine. I get challenged on my own medicine, you know, from coaches, from 
the guys in, 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 in my environment. And the idea is that we all get to, this is how we move to the next evolution of ourselves. We do it in, in concert with each other, in community with each other. Like this is not kumbaya, holding hands, skipping down the street type shit. This is real work with real stakes and real outcomes on the line. And as much as I believe in spiritual practice, I am all about getting shit done. I'm, I am literally the guy that you will come to when it's time to run through a wall. I will literally run through a wall, literally. And um, I always want to make sure I'm doing it in flow too. That's right. That's that masculine feminine balance right there. For sure. Run through the wall, do it in a flow state with emotional resilience and awareness. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Wow. Yeah. So I, that's, I mean, look, man, I, you know, I can talk on this shit all day. <laughs> I, know. I feel like we could, we could go for hours here and there's so <laughs> many gems and um, anyone who's watching live, thank you for being here. If you're watching later, you know, type replay. Cause I feel like there's so many moments here that get to be time stamped. I'm excited to release this later on all the platforms, the podcast way. But uh, brother, like people that want to get in touch with you, obviously the powerful work you're doing, where do they find you? Where do they start? Uh, you start internally. Um, don't just go look at me up to look me up and then, you know, do your normal uh, post podcast research. This is, this is not that kind of game. If you really want it, like if you really want to take your life to the next level, then then go on a search. Where does it start? Why? what do you want to create in your life? What do you want to create for you? That's where it starts. It starts with that question asked internally first. What do you want to create within yourself? And then let that inform the individuals that you bring into your universe, whether it's me or you or any other individual, right? But um, don't, you know, don't just go fucking, you know, information, you know, uh, you know, jacking off the information like you normally do. This is an opportunity to really like take a step back, do a self inquiry, and be like, yo, like this is the kind of this is the kind of people I want to in incorporate into my life. And if that is the case, then you can hit me up on you know my email is CEO at the All In CEO. Uh, you can go to theallinceo.com or you can hit me up on Facebook or you know Instagram the all at the All In CEO. Um, you know, um, we do powerful work. I do powerful work, and it's. Is game changing stuff, man. So you know, if you want to step into, to, I personally be believe that every man needs a mentor. Personally believe that every man needs a mentor, not because you are broken, but because you, but but because you, you are at the precipice of exponential greatness. Mm. And the only thing that you need to step into the next level is powerful reflection from somebody with battle-tested knowledge who can help you get through your own bullshit. And some of y'all are so charismatic. You're so charismatic. And y'all are handsome and shit. And y'all got all this stuff. I'm handsome and I'm charismatic and I got all these things going for me. And, and it's like, and you've been conning yourself with your own charisma. Just been conning yourself. Can't con me. <laughs> love you but I'm not the one so um, I'm as accessible as I am accessible you know you might get an email from one of my assistants but you know that's just the nature of the beast hit me up see what happens there it is wow well brother I am so grateful for this I just learned a lot I know our viewers just learned a lot and Man, you inspire the fuck out of me. Like, I'm going to come off this, this show just, like, lit up. And, you know, I'm asking myself internally, and I, I want to, like, write after this um, everything you're, you're posing because I'm still in that learning process. I know every man who gets to hear this is in that learning process, and obviously all the women also. Um, what would the divine in me do? What would God do? Because that's already what we're here doing. Offering value, making the world a better place by giving our gifts. Done. End of story. And then it's how we get there. So really grateful for you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you all for listening. It's been an honor being with you here today. And until next time.
Cheers. Salud. Muchísimas gracias. See y'all. Ahoj.